show for you tonight, folks. A lot of surprises. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Welcome to Emeril Live. You know, so many people save champagne for, like, a special occasion. Huh. <laughs> you know, they save it. Maybe a celebration coming up. You see, I'm from New Orleans where every day is a celebration. You get together with friends, you celebrate. Have a good day at work, you celebrate. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, you celebrate. <laughs> One of those things, you know. So tonight I thought I'd kick the celebration up a notch and cook with the same champagne that we all love to drink. That's what we're going to do tonight. Speaking about cooking, folks, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Island Band. Everybody all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the mood for a little champagne? Oh, yeah. You know it. <laughs> all right. We're going to kick it up a notch tonight because we're cooking with champagne right here on Emerald Live. excited about tonight's tonight's oh, show man. doc we're gonna go places nothing getting a little small here this jacket yeah, something what's, what's going on <laughs> must have borrowed some cloth <laughs> anyhow folks so uh, you want to know what's on the menu tonight yeah. yeah okay me too i'm so excited about tonight's show let me tell you first of all what we're gonna uh, what we're gonna do with this delicious champagne beside drink it uh-huh First and foremost, we're going to do a little champagne poached lobster salad tonight as well. One of my favorite dishes there. Show you how to make a little champagne vinegar. And then we're going to uh, make some seared scallops with a, a really delicious sauce made with champagne and vanilla bean. Wonderful combination. And then um, we're going to do a little chilled champagne soup with fruit and serve it with madeleines tonight. That's what we're going to do. That's what's on the menu. What do you think? You all right with that? All right. I'm going to open up a little bottle of some uh, of my favorite bubbly first to get things started. Is that all right with you, Doc? All right with me. Okay. I'm just checking over there with the posse. So we're going to just sort of uh, turn it. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Yeah. See, it doesn't have to be that difficult, folks. <laughs> You know why I'm doing this, folks? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> why I'm doing this is because we happen to have a very, 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 very special guest with us tonight that knows all about the pleasures of French champagne. You know why? why? I like when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> because she's the president and CEO of Vouv Clicquot Champagne. Yeah. But, but, but she's also the author of one of the hottest books in the country right now, French Woman Don't Get Fat, The Secret of Eating for Pleasure by Marie Giuliano, my good friend, and I'm going to have a toast with her right now. I can't forget you. Nice to have you. So, I'm really delighted to have you. We've been, uh, we've been friends a long time. I'm, uh, I'm proud that you are here. I'm proud to, uh, that you're my friend. 
And, of course, you know I love your champagne, being a friend of the widow. And um, how's the book going? I know you just got back from Australia. Yes. Thank you for having me. It's great to be with you. I see, see you so many times on TV, and we're all friends, so I'm delighted to be here. We're delighted to have you. Thanks. And I'm going to cook with some of this wonderful champagne. We're going to talk about champagne. But let's talk about the book just for a quick moment, Marie. Yes. What was the inspiration of you? I mean, you're such a busy lady. I've known you for years. And then all of a sudden... You're writing this book. I mean, well, what was the inspiration? Actually, the inspiration was all my American women friends. All these years I've been lecturing about food and wine, and they always ask me, well, you know, we see you eating at Emerald, we see you hosting dinners, we see you talking about food and wine. How come you're not fat? <laughs> and, you know, couldn't say I've been there, done that. Uh, French people are very private, so I would give them the French shrug and say, well, you know, French women don't get fat. <laughs> and they, they sort of pushed me and said, well, what are the secrets? Why don't you write a book? And so I did. That's great. And what are some of those secrets? Well, the secret is, is to have a different relationship with food. You know, in France, we, we tend to do like what you do here. And the reason all these wonderful people are here is for the same reason, to try to eat with pleasure because to eat with your senses. Because if you eat, you know, standing up on the rush, you eat more. You don't enjoy it, and you get fat. And uh, we like to sit down, you know, because as you said, the table is a place where people connect. Absolutely. It's much more than eating. It's celebrating life, the moment, an evening. Cooking, you know, for French people is a sensual act. It's not a chore. You love to cook, to, to cook for a friend, for your family, for your kids. For... So it's trying to explain that, that there is a way to um, have your cake and eat it too. That's, that's wonderful. <laughs> I well, so. i got to tell you this, folks. Uh, Marie uh, and her publisher were kind enough. French women don't get fat. Everybody gets a copy in the studio audience, okay? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> cheers. And cheers. Thank you. Doc. I'm making a new pack right now that the Emerald Live team, we start having four-hour lunches. I'm with that. <laughs> Sounds all right? good. With champagne. Okay, is that all right with the crew? Yeah. All right. Let me tell you, a little champagne vinegar, which we're going to use later, I'm going to take about a cup of this stuff. We're going to cover it with plastic wrap, make a few holes in it, and then with the natural spores that are inside of the air, it'll eventually will turn into vinegar, which we're going to use later for that great lobster salad, okay? Don't even think about touching that dial when we come back. I promise you, another notch! Back in. in the MLI band. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, folks. If you're just joining us, we're cooking with champagne tonight. Got my dear friend Marie in the house, president and CEO of Vouv Clicquot. Lots of champagne in the house. And her new book, French Woman Don't Get Fat. Yes. So when they... Uh, told me I was delighted that you were going to come on the show. I said, well, I guess what we'll have to do is uh, cook with champagne. And uh, we do a lot of this in the restaurant, uh, a lot of cooking with champagne, drinking champagne, starting with a little bit of champagne uh, for a good dinner. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is making a little bit of uh, sort of a very simple stock made with champagne to poach some lobster. Uh, right now, some of the hot things around in the restaurant world is... Everybody's butter poaching lobster or fish, uh, which is delicious. Uh, I still like using with lobster some champagne in a dish that I'm going to show you later also with scallops. But uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to make like a little uh, a stock or what I call a cubion made with champagne. And uh, so what we're going to do is... Um, oh, I love that sound. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. 
What we're going to do is we're going to just uh, add a little bit of champagne, first of all. And if you have a little bit of uh, stock, it's really delicious. Uh, what we're going to do to that now is we're going to flavor that champagne with um, a few things, a little bit of shallot, okay? And uh, we're going to add the zest of a little bit of orange flavor. You know me, I got to have a little garlic in there, a few peppercorns. Oh, yeah, babe. And then the juice of a lemon. And what we're going to do is you, uh, we're going to bring this up uh, and then slowly start reducing this. And uh, what it does is the champagne starts to reduce and all of the champagne flavor in there becomes very, very aromatic. This is what I did 20 minutes ago. You see that? And then what I've done is I added a little bit of tarragon in there. I want to slowly just bring this down in temperature. Because now what we want to do is this. We're going to take a lobster. And what I did with lobster, first of all, took the lobster and I actually just submerged it in water for maybe two, three minutes. I changed the little color. It's not really fully cooked. It's still sort of uh, got a little bit of rawness to it because I, I'm doing that purposely because I want to poach the lobster in that champagne or that little kubi on there. First of all, we're going to take the tail of... You can see it's not fully cooked, okay? But what I want to do is I want to take the meat out of there. So I just kind of squeeze it, snap the tail off the end. We should be able to just open it up. If you're afraid of that, zero problem. That's where the knife comes in handy. Oh, yes, indeed. And we'll take that meat right out of there. And we'll take the meat right out of there. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the meat in pieces. Same thing with the claw meat. We're going to take the claw meat, how you get that out of the shell, take it all out of there. What people don't realize is a lot of meat inside of the body here as well. And uh, what to do with the claw meat, we just snap off the bit of the knuckle, take out one of those, and then with the back of the knife, I just sort of use it. I'm sorry if I get you, Marie. <laughs> we got a big budget here, though. They'll buy you a new suit, believe me. <laughs> And then we'll just take sort of that meat out of it as well. And it's not just going to fall out because it's not fully cooked, okay? And then we have that in pieces. So now what we want to do is we're going to start slowly, the pieces of the lobster meat, we're going to start poaching it in this delicious flavored champagne with the orange and a little bit of the lemon. When we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to turn it into a terrific lobster salad. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs. champagne here tonight. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's get right to the salad here, shall we? Once it poaches a little bit more and the meat is completely cooked, what I then do is begin to take the meat out of this now that it's flavored. And then we're going to let it cool for our salad. Now, we could also serve it as a warm salad of lobster. So we could go with that effect as well. Or you could cool it. Now, we're not going to waste this part of the champagne. We're going to turn the heat now and really start reducing this down. Evaporation happens, concentration and flavor, OK? Because that champagne is made with grapes. And Marie's going to tell us in a little bit about making champagne. but. So we're gonna, we want that flavor. We don't want to waste that. What that equates to when that happens is what I have right here strained in this bowl. And then I have this chilled now. It's cold. So that is this. 
strained, and reduced. In this pan here, I'm going to take a little bit of shallot and a tiny bit of honey. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and to that, we're going to add some citrus juice which would be orange, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. You guys with me so far? Yeah. All right. There's a test later. <laughs> now what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of mix these ingredients together and begin to start just slightly warming this up as well. Now, to the reduction of the champagne strained. What I'm going to add to this now is a little tiny bit of that champagne vinegar that we made earlier. So now I have my vinegar. Now I'm ready to sort of dress this up a bit. Once this comes up and we've dissolved and mixed in, now we're going to add this to that. Oh, now we've got a really, really serious dressing going on. Some really good extra virgin olive oil. Keeping nice and light. <laughs> Super light. Now we're going to add a little bit of salt, a little pepper, and I'm going to flavor this with couple of things. Some fresh tarragon, really nice with lobster. And now what we're going to do is this, show you. We're going to take some little teardrop tomatoes. We're going to add those to some microgreens. Got to season them. Now we're going to take a bit of this dressing now, if you wanted to go the cold route, as in the lobster, you just chill it for a little bit. So I have the chilled lobster meat. We're going to add that in here. And then to that, a little bit of the dressing, a little at a time. This will save at least a week, if not more. Now, here's how I like to finish it. Lightly toss the salad. Lightly, lightly, <laughs> lightly. You should see how light this is right now. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is add that to the plate. And I like a couple of things. One, I like to add a little avocado. The richness of the avocado. I just sort of do some slices like this. So I'm going to do some slices of avocado. <laughs> like so. Okay. And then for my friend Murray, just a little nice dollop of caviar on top. And there you have a beautiful lobster salad that's been poached in champagne. Yes, indeed. We're going to hear a little bit more about French women don't get fat. Don't even think about touching that dial. Stick around. Back here. Emerald Lagasse here 
you're just joining us, we're cooking with champagne tonight. We have a very, very special friend and guest in the house. Ray Giuliano has uh, come by. She's the president and CEO of Vouv Clicquot, uh, which is uh, a fantastic champagne. We'll tell you about that in a second. But she's got one of the hottest books right now going on in the country, French Women Don't Get Fat, my kind of book. <laughs> I actually read this book. I got to tell you that. I read this book. It is definitely what I call a chick book. But anyhow... <clears throat> But I have everybody in my family reading it right now. It's, it's really, I did read it. It's fantastic. And I'm delighted to have you. Thank you. Um, we've had a lot of, a uh, few memories together. We mm -hmm. were just talking about one when we uh, landed in, uh, in Paris many years That's ago. Right. Actually, you know, Emerald will never tell that story, <laughs> but we were with a bunch of friends. We were younger in those days. And we land in Paris. We have a four-hour lunch. Then, of course, we walk because at 8 we have a four-hour dinner of five or six. <laughs> and then everybody goes to bed because we have to leave very early the next day to go to Veuve Clicquot. And we come in the lobby like at 6 in the morning. And who shows up? But Emerald, coming back, where did he go? <laughs> he went outside Paris to the wholesale market, Rangis, to see the stuff. Yep. And he was like, you know, and that tells me how passionate he is about everything he does. And he hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> Plenty of time to sleep. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> and then we went to uh, Vouv Clicquot and, uh, in Rems and uh, had a wonderful few days. And uh, I had the pleasure of becoming a friend of the widow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were special. in the caves. Very, very special time. And a very se uh, special celebration. And uh, thanks for coming. Thank Delighted you. to have you. Camille, thank you so much for coming. Thank All right, this next dish I've been doing a long time. That's my passion for champagne. It's a very simple champagne vanilla bean sauce. And let me show you how you make it. Great with shellfish. It's fantastic with lobster. I happen to love it with scallops. That's what we got at the fish market this morning. Beautiful, beautiful scallops. No smell. Sweet. We're going to do this little sauce to this. It's going to be fantastic. How do you make it? Well, it's pretty simple. Start with a little bit of shallot in the saucepan. Some good, great champagne. Take it off the stove. Not a lot. Let that begin to reduce with a little pinch of salt and a little pepper. How I'm going to fuse this now is I'm going to use a vanilla bean. So what you want to do using a vanilla bean is you've got to split the pod. This is actually a vanilla pod here, right? Inside is the vanilla. So you find the inside bit of that with your knife. What you want to do is you want to scrape this down. See, there's the vanilla right there. Did you get a shot of that, Buck? <laughs> Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that in there. And all of that's going to begin to start fusing the champagne. Okay? When that's done, and it reduces down, as you can see here, see all the little beans in there, all that? And you should smell it. I wish you had smell -o vision at home to smell this. Because it really smells fantastic. <laughs> now, once that reduces, evaporates, concentrates in flavor, we're going to add a little bit of cream. Probably not in your book right now, but. <laughs> Wrong. And then, of course, some butter. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this and we're going to actually turn this into a butter sauce. Unsalted butter, pieces, we're going to put it in there, incorporate it, not a lot of heat, OK? Now, before I start searing the scallops, I think there's a little bit of confusion in America about really how and what about champagne. Well, I thought it was champagne, but it's sparkling wine. It can only be champagne if it comes from the Champagne region of France. Other than that, it's sparkling wine. But really, the method of making champagne is pretty universal. Mm -hmm. The first important thing, beside the grapes, using either Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc, or Pinot Meunier, Pinot, yeah. is 
the house blend, which you're so renowned for mm -hmm. at Ruth Clico? Well, we make a classic champagne, and it's basically two-thirds Pinot Noir and one-third Chardonnay. After it's blended, mm -hmm. what happens? That's the mystery. I was mystified when I was there with you. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a fermentation going on in the bottle, and then it ages. Because when you buy a bottle of champagne, you don't have to worry about knowing, you know, what year, or is it ready? It's ready. It's released when it's ready. But before that, it has to age. And the yellow label, for example, ages about two and a half years before you find it on the market. And during that time, that's where you get these bubbles and um, the alcohol level, which is um, l low for wine in general. And um, then you have to get rid of the dead yeast, which is done by machine, but you know, today. But it was invented by Madame Veuve Clicquot, the widow Clicquot, in the 19th century. And every house uses that method. It's called the riddling. And so the riddling process, they riddle the bottles, mm -hmm. and this dead yeast comes to the top of the bottle, they the neck of the bottle, right. and then it has to be pushed out. Right. And then something is added. And then you fill the, wine with, uh, the bottle with some reserve wine, and you put the final cork. And then it's there a few more months aging the cellar, and then it's shipped to New York. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to show you a little secret for searing some scallops. Besides just a little bit of olive oil, you can see that pan is smoking. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to season the scallops, salt and pepper. Before we make the butter sauce. And then what we're going to do is we're going to begin to start searing the scallops. Too much smoke for you? Oh, you see those things up there in the sky? Watch this. See, they turned on now. All the smoke is going into the city of New York. All right. One of the secrets that I tell folks about searing scallops. Once they start with a hot pan like this, put it back on the stove. You let it go, you let it go, you see it's going to start searing. You see the color like that? When we're going to flip it over to the other side, we're going to put just a tiny bit of butter in there. And that deliciousness of the butter is going to just make the scallops good and happy. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Stick around. Back in. During the commercial break, uh, the butter went inside of the uh, champagne vanilla bean mixture. And when you're making any kind of butter sauce, folks, you want to be sure that once you get that butter going in there, you've got to turn the heat off. What I do is I take it right off the stove, and uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just put it in a, a little container like this and let that sit in a little bit of water. Let the water not simmer, but just stay warm to keep the, uh, to keep the sauce warm. The scallops are seared, added that little piece of butter in there, and how I simply like to just serve them, simply. I'm a big fan of chives, so what I do is this. And then, now if you do that in the water, be sure that you dab it so that the water doesn't mess up your sauce. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of that vanilla bean sauce. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we just... And you can serve this with any vegetable. You want to pat it? Pat it. The problem is, is most people overcook scallops. They should still be kind of opaque in the center. And then again, like I told you, I'm a big fan of chives, so I just take a few of these chives, 
and lay them out like this. And there you have it, folks, a little bit of seared scallop. It's a really, really fantastic taste. Not only is it a fantastic taste, it's fantastic. As I said earlier, with, not only with scallops, one of my favorite, but it works well with shrimp, works well with fish, works well with lobster, really dynamite dish. And I've always considered it a pleasure and a challenge to be able to cook with great champagne. So, so you didn't know the full service, full service <laughs> show here. Thank you. We Enjoy. Took, we took you well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a, uh, a wonderful, pardon my reach. Hi. Just call me Gasson. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. Enjoy. All right. I'm going to show you a wonderful soup. First of all, Madeleines are fantastic. I love them, which I'm going to show you how to make. But then you kick it up with a, a little fruit soup made with champagne. Ah, fantastic. Here's how simple it is. What is ripe? What is available? Today, for me, it was uh, honeydew melon, green apples, Got to add some sugar. How much sugar? Well, how sweet's the fruit? You got to taste it. Then I add uh, a little lemon juice, the zest of an orange, the juice of an orange, and then a little H2O. That would be water. And what we're going to do, just slightly to cover it, we're going to bring this up to temperature now. And basically, we're going to break down the fruit. We're going to cook the fruit down a little bit. We're going to cook it down. We're going to puree it. And then we're going to add champagne to that so we don't disturb the champagne. We're going to add the champagne to that. Now, the madeleines, which I love. Very simple. I got a couple of eggs and some sugar. And a um, good cup and a half of sugar. And what we want to do is you've got to whisk this together. And you can either do that by hand or one of those electric deals. But why you're doing this is because you really got to break down the sugar. You got to dissolve the sugar in this. And there's no other way, in my opinion, to do it than you got to whisk it and you got to just sort of break it up. You got to work with it. And when it starts to get pale, which hopefully is going to be soon, <laughs> or hopefully it's going to get pale before I do. But once it gets, starts getting dissolved and gets pale, then what we're going to do is we're going to now work it a little bit over a double boiler, okay? You can make one simply with a pan. You don't want to have the water boiling, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to work this. Now, I've got a few other ingredients there. Melted butter, a little bit of flour, and uh, orange zest. Once this gets really, really good and, and dissolved, and pale. Did you make my <laughs> Doc, let me ask you. Yeah. Would you happen to have any whisking music in that well, let me box see. of yours? Oh, thank you, Doc. That's really, really helping the pain. At least you're with me for the ride. Well, I'm there. All right, see how it's gotten pale now. Woo. Right. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add the flour, pinch of salt, the zest of uh, orange or lemon, and the melted butter. Okay? Now. Now we've got to sort of work that into the sugar and egg mixture and get some volume. At this point, I'm changing gears. <laughs> so I'm going to get some volume in here right now. This would be a good time for you to do, uh, hey, go open yourself some champagne. 
When we come back, I'll show you how to finish the soup. Stick around. We'll be right back. That's like, uh, this is like the talking drum, or doom doom. Is that what it's called? Doom doom. Doom doom. Doom doom. I gotta get me one of them doom dooms. <laughs> Imagine walking out like that, going, taking that on the subway. Right? <laughs> Excuse me, I got my doom doom with me. <laughs> they would get away from you, man. They get would, away. They'd go in the next car. <laughs> Welcome back, Cooking with Champagne. Our good friend Ray Giuliano is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right, so before I get back to Murray here, I just want to, uh, I, um, you can see that I got some volume on this stuff now, the Madeline, and when it's completely done, I find it easier. This would be a Madeline mold. Lightly butter them, okay? I find it instead of doing this, just for me, I find it easier to take the batter into a bowl and then I use this to fill it up. See, and you want to get it and then what I do is then I use the spatula to sort of level it out. You're going to fill up this mold 350 degrees, about 12 minutes. You want to talk about easy, but you want to talk about doing something fun with the kids? This is perfect. They come out, they're nice and warm. You dust them with powdered sugar. Oh, they have a, they go crazy. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I had some from last night right here. <laughs> so you bake them, and this is what they look like when they come out, okay? Like I said, I like to just, the powdered sugar thing, oh yeah, fantastic. Now, oh, thank you. The apples, the sugar, the melon, the water, the zest, cooked down. Why? Because it's cooked. It's more than fork tender. That's when you go and get the boat motor out. And then you stop pureeing it. You can do it in a blender as well. Now, once you puree it real good, some people want to strain it. Ah. <laughs> I'm not straining mine. I'd rather sieve it through my teeth. Just joking, Mom. So, you get it all pureed. So now we've got like this fruit soup. You can do this two days ahead, three days ahead. Because what you want to do is you want to chill it down in the ice box. That would be the refrigerator. <laughs> then, when you're ready, you can either serve this as a wonderful first course, or you could serve it as a dessert, which is a lot what I like to do. Then you get the awesome Veuve Clicquot. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> then you add the champagne to finish the soup. <laughs> then we're going to incorporate that. Now, you want to talk about delicious. See, I like serving this also as a first course. You get the first course and champagne out of the way right from the start, you know what I mean? <laughs> then you're ready to move on to some white wine. <laughs> Just joking. 
So watch how I finish this, Doc. All right. This is an awesome, awesome, uh, I mean, delicious. I like to serve it just like this in a beautiful bowl. I like to garnish mine with a little bit of fresh basil from the farm because that basil gives it this incredible flavor. And then if you're going to serve it as a dessert, you could serve a couple of the madeleines. And there you have it. Delicious. I want to thank my dear friend, Murray, for coming by and uh, out of a busy, busy schedule, especially just coming back from Australia. Uh, I don't even have to say best of luck with the book because it's one of the hottest things in the country right now. French women don't get fat. Unbelievable. Everyone in the studio audience gets a copy. <laughs> Camille, I want to thank you for coming by. Thank you. Hey, folks, I'm Emeril Lagasse. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. See you next time. <laughs>